I got to experience this. Um, they had a festival on where they do fireworks, and fireworks are technically illegal except on days when mm -hmm. when they're not. Everyone turns a blind eye, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And I, it, it's kind of funny, but that was one of the best days of my life when we got to set off fireworks. I know wow. it's just like every boy's dream to blow things up. <laughs> Welcome to Justice Matters, the podcast inspiring a world where everyone belongs. I'm your host. Tim Buxton. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the Justice Matters podcast. This is the last episode for season two, and it has been such a hoot. 2021 is coming to a close, and uh, I had the privilege for this final episode of sitting down with the producer of the show, the one and only Jared Bell. And he came into the studio. He works, or he is the founder of Walk a Mile Media. Uh, you get to learn a bit about why it's called Walk a Mile Media. Um, beautiful, beautiful name and great, powerful meaning. Um, but we not only sit down and learn about his work, we learn about also his uh, experiences living in Thailand, working for an anti-trafficking uh, organisation over there, uh, along with his wife, Alison. And it just was so, it was fitting, I think, to end the season chatting with with Jared who has just done a phenomenal job this season uh, we've had a great chat um, we were talking about things we learnt some of the great things we enjoyed from this season as well as uh, some things that we hope to plan and, and, and talk about moving forward into season three can't believe 2022 is just around the corner uh, my kids are counting down the days to Christmas uh, this has probably landed in your inbox now though after Christmas as we finish the year out we're going to take a bit of a break for the month of January and then we'll be back with some brand new episodes in February that being said though we will probably run a couple of um, you know popular reruns throughout January just to keep you interested and uh, look guys if there's any way uh, you want to reach out and let us know what you would like to have on the show moving forward in season three please send me an email at Hello at timothybuxton.com. Hello at timothybuxton.com. Uh, if you send me an email there and send me your feedback, I'd love to know how I can uh, incorporate your requests and what you'd like to learn more about in the future. Well, thanks guys for tuning in so far and uh, have a wonderful new year and a great start to 2022. Um, and let's continue to fight to make this world a better place for us all to live in. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Jared, welcome to the studio. It's this time inside. Yeah, the yeah. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me here. Um, we're just um, yeah, I'm just down for the day. So, so yeah, we'll pop in and say hello, and jump on a podcast, which you weren't expecting. We weren't expecting that. It was just sort of a last minute thing, testing out some uh, some gear and stuff. So yeah. yeah. So for everyone uh, that does not know, Jared, you are the master producer behind season two, which is fantastic, and um, I think it's great to be able to hear a bit about your story as well because sure. you've got quite an interesting one but um and then we might have a bit of a chat at the end about what what people can expect um maybe some highlights from this season from you because you've had to listen to every single episode you're probably the only person out there that has <laughs> listened to every episode and then maybe some some ideas of what we could do uh moving into season three 2022 sure, sure. um so jared yeah um you're part of this kind of little media team that is now growing with You Belong, uh, but you have your own company, Walk a Mile Media. Mm -hmm. So for people out there that want to produce their own podcasts or, or get some expert video uh, um, production done, they can reach out to you. But um, you've part, been part of a team that was living actually overseas for quite some time. Do you want to tell, tell us a little bit about your background and, and, and uh, yeah, your journey to here and, and yeah, now? Yeah, want me to go back. <laughs> as, as, far as, as far as you feel inclined to go. Um, okay, I've, I guess I started out doing video production 2007-ish. Okay. Um, I actually got in with my brother. Uh, we actually started doing weddings. That was where we started. Yep. We had no idea what we we're doing. Really? Um, we just went, hey, let's give this a try. We thought video, oh, that'll be a nice cheap industry to, to jump into. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. Uh. Um, and so without never doing a wedding or anything like that, we just started offering weddings really cheap, yeah. bought some gear and um, did that for three years. Uh, but we were both working full-time jobs at the time and it was um, – Basically, uh, I was doing all the editing. So it would, okay. you'd be out every Saturday night, Saturday for the yeah. wedding. And then I was editing every night of the week. 
and oh my gosh. the backlog. This is back in tape days too. So not yeah. only did you have to, you had to capture all the video to the computer in real time. So you got to press play and record it. Oh. So we did that for three years. We did 50 weddings exactly. And then we called it quits. Wow. Um, so I kind of did some, a little bit of video stuff after that, but I didn't have a lot of work. Uh, but I did get in with this organization called Destiny Rescue. Um, I was attending a, a church and the pastor of the church actually left the church and started working as the national, um, the head of Australian head of Destiny Rescue. Okay. Um, for those of you that don't know Destiny yeah, Rescue. Tell they, us a bit about what Destiny Rescue does. They, um, they mainly operate out, of Th- operate out of Thailand, but they do do a few other countries, Cambodia and stuff. Um, and their goal is to rescue kids, children mm. that are in sexual slavery. So prostitution, they've been sold into slavery by their family or they've been kidnapped. Um, and so these mm. are all underage kids. And it's um, it's pretty prevalent over in those countries. Um, unfortunately, most of the causes of this are Western men. Mm. Um, so... He was heading up that and he got me in to um, produce a promo for him. Mm. That's where I met Ashley, Ashley yeah. who works for You Belong Now. Um, and um, we hit it off. We got on really well straight away. Anyway, her and her husband ended up moving to Thailand and living mm. there for a while. And um, I visited a few times with them. Um, actually, the first trip was a disaster. Oh, I went really? over to do a promo with them. Um, so I was supposed to be heading over with um, Troy was the person that yeah. was the head of the thing at the time. He pulled out a week before. Oh, no. I had never been overseas by myself before. So I'm <laughs> heading to Thailand. I'm thinking a non-English speaking country. It wasn't that bad. But at the time I had no idea. I'm freaking out. So yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit introvert, uh, introverted with some things. Yeah. And so getting out of my comfort zone is not something I do very well. I have to push myself. Mm. Um, so I just I did it. And I got there and we filmed some promos and stuff and um, they ended up without me knowing at the time. So this is in Chiang Rai in Thailand for those of you mm. who are, have ever been to Thailand, it's northern Thailand, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. about an hour or so from the border to uh, Myanmar. Mm-hmm. Beautiful city, loved it. Uh, so I was there for a few days. It was really hot. It was in March. Yeah. So they don't have blue sky at that time of year because it's all um, polluted. A smoke. Oh, really? Because a lot of burning. Why off. is that? Oh, okay. Just yeah. from not in the Thailand. Deforestation from, or no, no. The uh, uh, just the, the trash. farmers. Farmers. Oh, farmers. Farmers burn off their uh, rice paddy crops and ah. stuff like that. And so for for about three months a year during summer, wow. you rarely see blue sky. It's just grey. Wow. And it's hot and it smells and um, so it's not the nicest time of the year to be there. Anyway, um, halfway through the year, uh, halfway through the week. We end up going to this town called um, Pattaya. Have you heard of Pattaya? I've not heard of Pattaya. It's actually cl- classed as the um, sex capital of the world because it's oh. pretty much only reason is brothels. Oh. And um, it's on the coast. So it's down uh, southeast, of, southeast of Bangkok. Okay. It's on the beach, a horrible beach, but that's where basically all the um, – main, main, most of the, the – it's, it's, it's quite a big city. Yeah. But um, that's pretty much where all the uh, action happens. <laughs> yeah. Call it action, but that's where all the bad stuff happens. Yeah. It, it's, it's everywhere. It's in Bangkok. It's it's everywhere. Sure. But that's basically people only go to this town for one reason for that. Yeah. Because it's um it's not a nice place. Think of it like a uh, surface paradise, but about a billion times sleazier. Mm. Um. So I ended up there without them knowing. Like, let's talk about pushing me out of my comfort zone. Sure, I this could is imagine. Like ridiculously out of my comfort zone. Yeah. But I actually got sick. Um, it was basically just uh, like a flu, but it just made oh. me miserable. And I'm just like, I don't want to be here anymore. It was awful. Uh, anyway, we um, we filmed some stuff there as much as we could. I didn't, they go into, they go undercover. So yeah. these guys, uh, I don't know how they do it, but they go undercover into bars and stuff. And they, they have to pretend to be customers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, they obviously don't do anything beyond trying to befriend the girls. Yeah, but basically they got to treat. They've got to. Pre- they've got to befriend the the girls to um get them to trust them before they can offer to get them out of that lifestyle. They can't just take them. That's kidnapping. Yeah, they've got to. They've got to be willing to go, wow. and then we put them into care. And they put them into care and they they train them vacation. They give them vac- vocational training, skills and training, skills and training to get a job. Um, outside that, Industry. which is very hard because they, a lot of them have debts. 
Mm. Their families have debts. That's why they end up in this mm. thing, uh, in this in in this place. And um, it's very hard because even with all that, they actually earn more money doing that than they would for doing a normal job. So right. getting them out of that and putting them into a standard a, a normal job, especially in a place like Thailand, which is not third world, it's a, a second world country. Um, uh, they're still they're still uh, don't earn a lot of money. Yeah, and they and they're not obviously got prior education for the most part, and no, so they're all from villages, starting from from scratch exactly. anyway. And exactly. So we we give them education, mm. and then we give them some training in certain areas. They uh, the Destiny Rescue uh, for a while had a cafe and a mm. hairdresser. Hairdressing was very big, mm. a salon. Um, I don't think they're. I haven't really been part of Destiny Rescue for a few years now, so I'm not okay. sure exactly what. What's they're going on doing. now? Yeah. I think they're rescuing kids, and then they're using other organisations to do the aftercare stuff. Um, sure. The aftercare stuff is is to do both was a was was pretty hard. Yeah. Um, because it just requires so much support, and um, I think it was a, a struggle to get enough support. Yeah. To to do both sides of the coin, basically. Yeah, of course. Um, and there's and then and when you think about it, it's not just rescue and aftercare. It it then to go full circle, you're thinking, well, what? How do we prevent this from happening in the first yeah, place? So yeah. there's there's so many places you could intersect or engage in this kind of exactly uh, work to stop it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so now yeah. I actually work for another organization called Project Justice International. Okay. I mainly work on their website because that's another side of my yeah. business, um, and they deal with more of the prevention stuff. So they go to villages, they teach the kids about right. Being, pro, uh, you know, being proactive in the families against these people that come in and take yep. them and stuff like that. But they also train them and teach them skills. Um, while most of the, these child slaves are, are girls, mm. there are boys as well. So yeah, of course. Um, they do a lot of, um, with the boys as well, in teaching them how to do um, like metalwork and carpentry and all mm. this kind of stuff, building stuff concreting stuff that they can get employment for which can help support their family so they don't have to have this so exactly there's lots of education, uh, education. and and empowerment training is, right. is the key isn't it really at the end yeah. of the day that's right kids need to be in school they do they don't need to be working as a child you know like we, we we don't expect our kids until right. they're like 14 15 maybe to get a part-time job at mcdonald's you know but to focus on their education because it's so important absolutely so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the, that was my first trip. My second trip, I ended up going over there with actually a schoolies trip. Mm. And um, it was actually... So schoolies, okay, this this is for our US and international. <laughs> it's like you've graduated high school and, and a lot of people, you know, kind of like spring break, you finish school and you just go party for a week. Yep. And usually it's quite a debaucherous thing to yes. do, but <laughs> there's often, there's a group of... Um, there's tens of groups that actually do like adventure trips or right. or um, humanitarian trips, and so I guess you went on one that was a group of kids, uh, good kids, I guess, that yeah, wanted they, to, they to, to make a difference with their yeah. So I was going over there to um, film part of their trip mm. um, for more promotional, so they could promote it in future years. Um, and you know, I'm I'm 42, so this was ten years ago. Mm. So you know I'm still I'm still way older than everybody in the group. <laughs> but we had a blast. And yeah. I was only there for the first half of the week with them. Um, we're in Cambodia and mm. I had a blast. And then I ended up going to Chiang Rai again. And this time we did some more filming, but there was a larger group there and we weren't we um of um volunteers this time. Mm. And I think and Ashley was there this time. Okay. She wasn't there the first time. And so we um we just had a great time and I I got to experience this um they had a festival on where they do fireworks and fireworks are technically illegal except on days when mm -hmm. when they're not. Everyone turns a blind eye, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And I, it, it's kind of funny, but that was one of the best days of my life when we got to set off fireworks. Wow. I know it's just like every boy's dream to blow things up. <laughs> uh, oh, and so I, I had such so anyway. I had such a, a better time this time. Yeah. And um, I said to Ashley um, on the last day that we were filming, I said, "Oh." have you guys thought about having someone over here? And they go, actually, we've talked about it. And I said, let me go back and we'll talk to my wife and um, we'll see what happens. And and uh, I'll, I'll see if we come over. And she's like, okay. So I was actually also working for Destiny Rescue in Australia a day a week producing promo stuff. Okay. But the problem is you're not getting any of the on-ground stuff over right. there. And they didn't have the um, the equipment or personal sure. people to do that and do it well. Um 
so we were producing stuff in Australia, but it was all basically Australians doing talking heads, promoting stuff. Yeah. But we didn't really have any content from the from, from the Thailand, ground. from the ground, yeah. from Asia. And I got back to Australia and I said, like, basically the first hour I got back and talking to my wife and I said, what do you think about moving to Thailand? She said, yes. Straight wow. away. She's like, yep. How crazy is that? So three months later, we had, um, we went, we were living with a friend at the time who was. Um, did she, we'll just wheel back that. Yeah, did, yeah. did, was she expecting you to ask no. her? It was just, she just, well, out of the blue, you say, let's go to Thailand. And she's like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I personally, I think that was a God thing. Yeah. Um, she um, she told me later that she she really wanted to, uh, I guess she was kind of feeling a little bit... Um, left out? No, well, she, not left out, but she works in childcare. Mm. And she just, I think she said that she'd been wanting something. She'd been praying for something mm. to get out of this sort of rut of mm. mundane work that she was doing. And so her her heart just leapt wow. when I met, said it to her and she was like, yes. And so we, we were living with a friend at the time, so we didn't have any um, it was mortgage his, his house or, or anything yep, like no, that to worry exactly. about. Exactly. So, wow. And um, we had been living with him to um, try and uh, get out of debt. We mm-hmm. had some debt that we were trying to get rid of and we had done that. So we had nothing besides a car to, um, to sell. So we put some furniture in storage and stuff like that, but um, sold our car and, how awesome is 12 that? 12 months in Thailand. Great, great, fantastic year. Amazing year. Now, it wasn't all sweet. Um, I could imagine, yeah. I, I, I coped with it probably better than uh, my wife got a little bit more homesick than mm. I did. And she actually got pretty sick. Um, oh, she actually just, has sinus issues. Oh. And we got there in March, like I said before. Mm, smoke, smoke. Cloud. So she was in pain a lot for the first um, three months until the storms came and we started getting, and then it was a lot better. But yeah. But great year. We did a lot. I did a lot of traveling to Cambodia and um, around Thailand. And um, living over there is is an adventure. Um, we weren't. It wasn't like we were living in a small village. We were, Chiang Rai is a city. Mm. They have a McDonald's. They have a cinema where you yeah. can go see English movies. You know, it was not. Um, uh, if, when people think of missionaries and stuff like that, they think they're going into the deepest jungles somewhere and stuff like right. that. We, while. Um, we we went. I I didn't say we were exactly missionaries as such. Now you you've come from a missionary background. Yeah. So it's probably a little different to that. Yeah. When I grew up in Indonesia, my parents were definitely uh, very much living you know, in the, living in that jungle kind of the, the epitome of yeah the Dani tribe in the highlands of New Guinea. So exactly. But yeah, I so can it, understand it was, where you're It was from. not like that. Um, we were living in a house with other people. There were other sure. people living in the in the house, but um, you know, we had, you a, had a job to do. You we were had there a job. To, you were there to produce videos yeah. for an organization. And we were being paid. That it was, was not. I mean, we didn't. Get, it, there wasn't exactly. It's cheap to live over there, honestly. Yeah. So there was. They didn't have to. It wasn't. We didn't have to earn much. We had some support from Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, some people supported us and stuff. But you know, we um we had a car to drive around in. Mm. Um, most people had bikes. My wife doesn't drive, so we we had to actually get a vehicle. Mm. Um, but that worked out well. We had a, a an older Ute, but it was great. So it was good. Man, and so you did that for a year. What year was that? That you? Uh, two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. Okay. So we crossed over two years in that, uh, over one year. Yeah. Um, into a new year with that. Um, so it came to twelve months, and we um, we weren't feeling called to stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we came back to Australia, and um, I wasn't. Uh, I've been back a couple times. Um, since then, I was, there, was, there was two other visits. I was planning to go regularly, um, but that kind of didn't work. And then they got someone else in to start to produce in their videos who was living there. And so um, that kind of – I guess we went our separate ways in, in some ways and stuff like that. But that's okay. I had a passion for um, for working with uh, – I know you said you don't like the word non-profits. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I listen. <laughs> um, um, charities and stuff like that. So uh, mm. my business mainly focuses on small businesses and like non-profits and I do a lot of church st- churches stuff as well. Because yeah. um, I'm by myself. It's, um, I'm a sole trader. Yeah. Um, I work with a girl called Tracy. Um, she's uh, – um, so I work for I work for Walker Mile Media. She has Walker Mile Creative. Oh, I so love that. So we started Walker Mile Media together, but we don't – we're not a partnership in okay. terms of a partnership because – I actually, the, my my role actually requires a lot more work. Yeah. So we couldn't split things 50-50. So yeah. we, we created two different businesses that are like sister Yeah, that's companies. so cool. 
Um, so she has that and she focuses mainly on her stuff. So I comp- subcontract her into Brilliant. to do stuff and she subcontracts with me for her clients. Um, but she's working for you guys now. I know. We've got her coming on helping us with all the yeah. social media, SEO stuff, yeah. which is how she kind of helps you with yeah. a lot of stuff. Here. Exactly. So she was in a, she was in Thailand with me. So we were, like I said, we're the only two Australians in our little media team. Yeah. Um, I was telling you earlier. And um, – we became great friends. Um, we worked opposite each other. She was her desk hilarious mine because she would have been was so much fun to work opposite. She's yeah, a yeah. She's she's cool. Delight. She's cool. Um, so it was a bunch of mainly American people. They had recruited into there for their graphic designers and stuff. Yeah, and it was just us two little Aussies. So <laughs> you know, we'd be like, oh, those Americans. You know? no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was you, like. You, your wife is American, so you know that even though we're both Western countries, there is still cultural differences between our two countries. Oh, yeah. You live there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I've been to America before, and but most I'll have a lot of American friends, and I definitely know there's definitely cultural, cultural differences between oh, our mate. two countries. There's so big differences. I mean, yeah. people don't people just don't realise. I mean, even in America itself, right? Yeah. The Northwest North the South. versus the South, know. you know, versus the Northeast versus – you know, the West or Midwest or where, whatever you want to, you know, there's so much diversity within yeah. America itself. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. So um, so sometimes we'd have a little bit of a clash of cultures sometimes, but generally we got along pretty well. Yeah. So it was cool. And I'm still friends with all, all of them as well, so it's pretty cool. Day in the life of my home, right? There's sometimes a little <laughs> clash of cultures, but generally we can. No, nah, we, <laughs> we need each other. We do. We, um, mate, and it's kind of fun that you've got this – this little ref, ref, reformation of a team again of, of Ashley, yourself, and 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 Tracy, who it's did a lot of historical work together, but just get on so well and get each other and, and enjoy working together. So it's kind of a treat for you along to kind of have have uh, you know somehow landed um, yeah. all three of you in different ways. And I'm learning so much um, because I really didn't think much about. Um, like refugee crisis and and all this mm. stuff before that, you, 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 it's so easy to get stuck in your little bubble. Sure. Um, and like even before I started working for Destiny Rescue, it was funny that like I had no interest in Asia at all. Mm. I'm like, I never want to go to Asia. I don't care about Asia. Mm. I want to go to America. I want to go to mm. Europe. You know, that's mm. mainly holiday kind of vibe. But yeah, I had no interest in Asia. I love Asia now. Mm. It's like one of my favorite places. Yeah, like you said, you you grew up in Indonesia and. Did you say that? And yeah. New Guinea, yeah, New Guinea yeah, and stuff. So you you know what Asian culture is like. I mean, it's slightly different. From it's hospitable, loving, it's lovely gentle, people. kind people. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and now I think it's uh, great because I'm learning about this about the refugees mm. and um, how amazing these people are uh, that I I just I really hadn't thought about before. Yeah. And so I love that this podcast is out there because. Um, I'm encouraging people to listen to it. Mm. Um, I'm producing it and I'm like, I'm telling people about uh, like you, you, you got justice matters, which is not technically all about like refugees. No. You do a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, the first one you got to me to edit was, um, I can't remember his name. It was a two part episode. The guy that goes to the Antarctic. Oh, uh, Jeff ex- Wilson. Yes. Oh my goodness. It just blew my mind. Wow. What a story. What I a know. story. He's talking about after the tsunami. In, yeah, that's and, right. In um, and, and him traveling, hiking by himself through the coldest temperatures you could ever imagine. Yeah. I'm like, what a man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, speaking about the, epi- the, you know, the episodes you've just been editing, mm. um, Jeff Wilson's obviously a standout. Mm. Um, when you think about, you know, the various different topics we had. Is there any other ones that kind of spring to mind that kind of... Yes. Um, um, I'm so bad with names. Is it... Uh, the guy that used to live in South America. Um, oh, uh, Eduardo Eduardo, Cruz. what a cool guy. Yes. Oh, that champion. story. That was He's got some great stories. Yeah, phenomenal. yeah. Like, I love stories. So, as a, as someone that does video, yeah. I love telling stories is... Mm. is um, uh, what I love doing. So I, I do stuff that doesn't require a lot of storytelling. Mm-hmm. I'm talking with s- small businesses and sure. stuff. But the stuff that I really get excited about is when we actually have to tell a story. Yeah. About something. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that was a powerful story. I was thinking, I remember you, I was, um, I sent this one episode to you and you were like, wow, that that was really good. Um, and it was the Susan Slotnick one. She went into um, prisons. prisons. Yes, that was another one. Yep. Yeah, I yep. remember you, you commenting on that one and yep. that, that to me I've I've even looked 
back on that one. I love doing Eduardo's interview. That was probably one of the easiest interviews for me to do because we just had such a great time. Just he seemed like such a really well, just so relaxed. Yeah, love Susan. It. Susan was a fellow New Yorker, so I kind of <laughs> could understand a lot of what you know. I knew I've been to New Paltz, where she lived, beautiful, yep. and so I could put, picture myself almost mm. in in her city talking to her, even though we were talking over Zoom. Mm. But um, the the you know the. So, <laughs> As you, as you know, and as 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 I, I share quite openly on this podcast, I'm very much driven by the the heart of Jesus, who yep. who really um, did a lot of his work amongst the most outcasts of people. And yep. one of those groups were the prisoners. You know, yeah. the people that most of us in society write completely write off. They deserve yep. to be in prison. Look what they've done. And yep. Susan's like, you know, she was listening to these stories yep. of these young boys, these young men that had done horrendous things that were yep. pretty much on death row. There, yeah, there's yeah. no chance of them coming out. Yet, in that place of complete, utter darkness, despair, yep. depression, to to go into a place like that, as Jesus said, where were you when you visited me in, in prison? Or yep. did you go to those in prison? And yep. did you serve them and love them? And and she was doing it for yep. 25 years and just yep. saw some incredible results. Yeah, yeah that was definitely an inspirational um, uh, our podcast, that episode, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, just... When I was talking before about getting outside the comfort zone, that was that that would definitely be outside my comfort zone. Right. But um, I like I said, I found that when I have pushed myself out of my comfort zone, mm. um, they have been the like they've created the the the, the best memories and for me mm. and um, the best stories to tell mm. um i won't go into a story of this my time when i was in cambodia and me and this guy were oh, visiting no. um now you have to uh it's oh, kind of it, a long one it's a long one okay so yeah we'll come back come you back in season three we'll have <laughs> we'll have jared the producer's episode we'll get you to <laughs> do that episode. we'll get you to do that story yeah. anyway that, i was basically i was saying that that was probably the most out of my comfort zone I've ever been in my life just because of the situation we got ourselves into. It was not a, anything to do with Destiny Rescue or anything like that. We were we went off on our own little adventure for a couple of days. Wow. And, um, Transformational. Well, just to a point that we had to – He's he was cool. Like he works for, he works for Destiny Rescue. He's um, mm. up the Sunshine Coast um, these days. He's a graphic designer. Um He's so he's so laid back. He's he's a great guy. His name's Carl. Mm. Um, he's so laid back with everything. He was just yeah, it's all cool. It's, it's all, all fine. cool. And I'm just like, we're gonna die. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we didn't. But yeah, man, <laughs> you're on the edge, man. You you, you knew what it was to live. It was such a great just it's, for a split moment. <laughs> it's in hindsight, I'm like, these are the best. These are the memories that you remember. Yeah. I don't remember a lot of things. Well, they're the stories to tell, aren't they? The yeah. The, the the crazy adventures yeah. of, of your life. Anyway, since then I haven't done um, – I've basically just been um, running my own business um, from home. Telling other people's stories as well Telling as – other people's stories. Now, um, yeah. And um, I'm I'm super excited to be working with You Belong, yeah. um, telling more stories. Because I, I, there was a time when I wasn't doing a lot of storytelling because I was working mainly with mm. doing promotional stuff for businesses and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and um, human stories. Okay, so they might tell a story, but the human stories yeah. definitely speak to me more and I enjoy telling the more human stories. Yeah. Um, so that's... So so it's that, it, for me, I the, the coin come back into not liking the word non-profit or even charity, to be honest. It just sounds so like I'm giving charity to somebody. <laughs> um, this idea of having a social impact. Mm. Like whatever we do, and it can be a business, mm. like Outland Denim or mm. like... Little Phil or other organizations that mm-hmm. have their niche, your business yep. is geared towards having a social impact by prioritizing the business that's making a difference, yep. businesses that are having an impact on there and amplifying their stories. So it doesn't matter what it is that you do. Um, I think we all can realize now that we can use either our skills, our talents, our time, our resources yep. to improve the world, yep. to make it a better world, a more just, fair world, or we could use it to just be self-serving and I know know about you but <laughs> I mean I mean that's where uh, when Tracy and I came up with the name for our business which is Walk a Mile Media mm. it was it's from that saying oh, I love you that you never know like um, oh, I'm going to misquote it now but it's basically you know the saying where you get, you don't know someone until you walk a mile in their shoes ah that's right yeah and that and that's basically it and so our 
goal originally was to work with mainly non-profits mm-hmm. <laughs> um, as well. Now, I, like I said, I work for small businesses because they're, they, they, they're my bread and, bread and butter. Yeah. That, that keeps me going, keeps me hey, small paying the bills. Small businesses employ so many people and are the heart and right. soul of... So um, that's why that is. But that get, frees me up mm. to then focus on mm. doing... Because a lot of the organisations... Um, they don't have a lot of money because they are supported by their uh, by their supporters. donations, and donations yeah. and stuff like that. So um, I work that into when we're talking costing and stuff like that. We really try to make it work for them so that they can yeah. they can get their message out because um, production can cost a lot of money. Oh mate, tell me about it, <laughs> mate. We have we've been so so blessed by the work you've been doing already and. Um, hopefully, speaking of the future moving forward, um, not only next next year um, with with um, season two, uh, season three, three season, season two three? complete, season three now getting ready to cool. to happen in in. Well, we'll probably be launching some fresh episodes in February, so we'll take the month of January off. For, we might throw a special few reissues of some of the old old classics from either season one or two, but um, oh yeah. But uh, what would you like to see? I mean, if as a listener, as someone who is probably generally curious as to who's I'm talking to next, what would what would you want it, me to to do more of? Um, I would say, uh, like I said, the the people that stood out to me mm. that you talked to are the ones that are telling stories, their Humans, stories, their stories. Yeah, love that. Um, you know, especially um, people that. You know, live uh, live in other countries. I mean, and have have that story to tell about their lives that we just don't understand in Australia. Mm. I think that's. I mean, for us, for for me personally, until I actually visited overseas, I like I said, I um I had no interest in Asia, mm. but until I actually saw how people in Asia live mm. and how the, the and the poverty around. You see images on TV and stuff like that. It seriously doesn't impact you the way it does when you're there. Mm. But this, if you can, I- images are one thing. But if you can have the story that um, that goes with that, that impacts your your life and and stuff like that, and you're thinking about things. They're the stories that are they're the they're the things that I personally I like to hear. Mm. That doesn't mean that other people don't have things to sure. say. But but let's get some more. Let's get some more le- people with lived experience. I guess you're saying people that have and that can pass is, on uh, their their knowledge and and you, and and stuff to to the listeners as well. Yeah. Um, through that lesson, I mean, we talk about we talked about Jesus before. Mm. How did he t- How did he teach through parables? Yeah. Um, now, which are basically stories because exactly. that was that's how people uh, learnt. It's how we still learn it's today. So still are, you, learn. are you kidding me? That's, like, how, that's why the movie and the TV industry is so big is because they're telling totally. stories because people want, want to hear stories. You remember a story, you don't remember a lecture. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Can, so that would be what I what I like. Now, um, not everyone has a story about something dramatic. Something or, yeah, dramatic yeah. and stuff like that. That's okay. Yeah. I told a story about how I went and got sick in the first time I went to Thailand. <laughs> Probably really not that exciting. <laughs> no, it was. I mean, um, it was phenomenal. And what it was, it was, it was your, it was your, you taking a step out of your comfort zone and it having a profound impact on your life. Yeah, I mean, if, if we talk about what this episode's about, it's yeah. probably stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, and if if that can encourage someone to step out of their comfort zone to do something about anything, yeah. then I then I'm. Then that that was worth talking about. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, Jared, it's just so great to have <laughs> the producer, the man behind the scenes, um, with the cameras pointing at them, and yeah, uh, and sure the mic like being on this side of the camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm just so glad to have uh, yeah to introduce everyone and all the listeners and out there That's subscribers fun. to you. And and if they want to learn more about you, Walk a Mile Media. Um, you do a vast array of of um, services within yeah. the media industry. So it's not just video. You said you did websites. I do websites as well. Yeah. Websites as well. Yeah. So Sorry. if you're listening and you need a quote and <laughs> someone to help you out, uh, you got some spare time if we don't keep you too busy, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we're just about to, to break for Christmas. Yeah. This is Christmas this week. It is. Um, so, yeah, pretty busy. Um, 
uh, yeah, in the new year is always pretty quiet. So, you know, so you reach never out. Know. Let's get know. this one out uh, before the. Hopefully, we can drop this one before the end of the year. So, we're going to drop a few at, at a fast pace here, which is great to finish the year with a flurry. But, um, but Jared, it's been a pleasure having you on. And it's been a pleasure being here. You know, thanks to you, our cameras are going to. Our cameras just got tweaked and upgraded. Not, not, not physically, but the <laughs> software and the and the all the white balance and all those things that I was. I taught him how to record from his watch. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a cool fancy watch. I can press stop on the record um, feature on my watch. How cool is that? It's pretty oh, cool. So good. W- what a world we live in with technology. It's got its – it can be detrimental in a lot of ways, but, <laughs> man, it makes um, giving uh, spreading the message yeah. that much easier and that much better. Well, look, usually I end the episode with an outro where I say, and thanks to all my patrons and thanks to Jared, the producer. Well, <laughs> I'm going to do it live right now. Jared, thank you so much for producing Pleasure. this episode that you will be producing very <laughs> soon. Um, thanks for producing this this season. It's been great. Thank you also to all our patrons out there that, that do um, support this podcast. And you can jump on that by going to patreon.com forward slash justice matters. Um, any amount can really help to, on a monthly basis to help us keep producing this podcast. Mm. Um, there's ways you can learn about us on YouTube. So if you're listening to this in your car or you're riding a bike or you're doing something, you're running and you're listening to my voice, I, I pity you. But anyway, um, none of the, regardless of that, you actually can go home and if you want to um, check the video podcast out, we're on YouTube as well. So Justice yep. Matters TV. So anyways, I think that's it for today. And um, Jared, thanks again. Pleasure. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for listening to this episode of Justice Matters. I'd also like to shout out to the Patreon community that financially supports this podcast. Guys, thank you so much for your support. You can join them simply by going to patreon.com forward slash justice matters where a simple donation of $5 a month, you can become part of the Patreon community and get access to behind the scenes content and extras that I share just with you. And lastly, there is another really important way that you can help support the podcast, and that's simply by rating it or leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, maybe by subscribing on YouTube. Yes, we are a video podcast as well. Guys, thank you so much for listening in to this episode of Justice Matters. Please come again soon. I can't wait to share more episodes with you. Thank you so much. I'm your host, Tim Buxton. Thanks for listening.